to convert the iconic tankless water heater from natural gas to propane, we're gonna follow the instructions that are included with the water heater. Uh, some of the first steps that you'll see listed are remove water source, turn off gas. Uh, if the water heater is already in service and for some reason you need to change it over, you're gonna wanna disconnect all the power, gas, and water and turn that off to the unit. I would say that the majority of these will be converted upon or before installation as they're going to be going into a specific application and you should know which gas source you're going to need to convert this to. Or perhaps just leave it in natural gas if that's what you have or convert it if it is propane. As mentioned, they come ready for natural gas so if you have propane that's when you're going to be doing this. So first thing we're going to do, obviously this does not have power to it, no gas, no water. It's not been installed, it's ready to go for a conversion. We're gonna take the front cover off. Top and bottom, there's two covers with little indicators here where you would push down and you can slide those right out. Very simple, four screws. Now we're going to be removing quite a few screws on this unit, so if you have a small bowl, uh, preferably magnetic, you can keep your screws in there, and that'll help keep track of them. Also, if you accidentally knock them down, they'll stay inside of the magnetic bowl. So, very handy tool. All right, I'm going to carefully remove the front cover. And we'll set that aside. Okay, so with the front cover removed, we're gonna see some familiar things. We've got the heat exchanger. We've got our OHL. This is, of course, a safety device installed and wrapped around in the heater. If this is ever damaged, the water heater becomes inoperable. So please use care when uh, adjusting or moving this out of the way. Power control board. Here's our display. Our next step is going to be to remove the seven screws holding the gas orifice block in its position. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven kind of back there if you can see it. These are Phillips head screws. So we're gonna use an extension to be able to reach down in there and we'll start removing these. Don't get these mixed up with these Torx head screws. You wanna remove the Phillips head screws. Let's get those out of here. Once you remove those seven screws, this comes right out. And you can see up here the plate, natural gas or LP. And this is, of course, a new water heater. It comes included with the natural gas plate, and it's signified with this little dimple there next to the NAT. The new one we put in should have a little dimple next to the LP. So let's go ahead and move on and we'll start disassembling this, see what's included in our parts bag and we'll convert this over to LP. Okay, we're gonna get our area ready where we can convert this over. I'm gonna go ahead and set some cardboard down just to protect my workspace. I highly recommend if you're working at your own house or if you're a technician in the field at someone's house that anytime you're working, you lay some sort of protective cover down if it's on the countertop. You certainly don't want to ever set tools or especially especially sharp metal objects on countertops or the floors as well. So 
We'll use this today to go ahead and protect our countertop. And we'll get started with our conversion kit here and see what all is included. Tags that we will be putting on the water heater to let anybody else know that may work on this heater that this has been converted to LP. Three, four, five, six. Six seals, three screws. Okay. Now I don't want to mix these up with those, although they look like they are identical. Okay, perfect. No worries about mixing screws up. And then here's our chip. This is our LP chip that will go and install on the power control board. Okay, here is our LP plate. You can see that this one has the little dimple next to LP. Easy to identify, and this is gonna be the one we're gonna to wanna to use. In the paperwork that comes with this, it says it's notated it's LP with the little divot or the dimple that's there next to it. It also says it has a blue mark on the paperwork. I don't see that. Oops, we'll put that back on. This one doesn't have any type of a blue mark on it, but that's okay. We have our mark here, LP, so we know we've got the right one. And let's see if we can see any notable differences between these two. No, a little bit different, but almost the same. I'm gonna remove this screw here. Now remove these screws with the power tool. When I go to put them back together, I'll use a regular screwdriver. You don't want to accidentally over tighten. It's easily stripped out with the power tool. Okay, so we're going to lift this off. Here we have our two gaskets that were installed. We'll set this off to the side. Okay, now we can go ahead and reverse the procedure to reinstall the plate. Make sure those gaskets stay in place. Great, and we'll put our screw back in. This is another screw, all of these screws are identical. If you mixed them up, it would not be the end of the world. Okay. We'll go ahead and tighten that down. Snug, that's it, that's all you need. All right, our plate is installed. Well, our next step is to go ahead and reinstall this into our water heater. This is where the block is gonna be installed. This is where we removed it from. This can move around a little bit. Be careful with that. These washers or gaskets that are already installed are new. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse these. It does include with the package new seals. So if this water heater were for whatever reason running off of natural gas and now you're converting it to LP, you wanna go ahead and install some new gaskets. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and carefully reinstall the block. And you'll get a good positive fit when everything is matched up. And we're good here. So now we'll put our seven screws back in. Okay. Carefully put these in and tighten these down. They should thread in nice and easy. If you suspect it's cross threading, let's go ahead and back it out and try again so that you do not damage the internal of the water heater or the screw. Okay. I'm gonna try it over here. All right, 
problem there. We're going to try a different screw in this hole here. felt either. Okay. We'll just get this last one in here. It looks like it's going to be a tight fit. We'll just verify that we're not cross-threading anything. There, that one's going down nice. Get this one seated all the way down there. All of the screws are installed. It does not have listed any particular torque sequence or torque specifications. So we're going to go ahead. I like to start in the middle. Okay, just nice and snug. Then I'm going to go up here. Then I'm going to work my way out down here, up here. Over to here. Now this one that's way back here, it's kind of hard to get to. And then this last one here. Perfect. Okay. Now we will take our yellow and black wires that we unplugged earlier and plug that back in. Now, once we do put this water heater into service, we're going to double check and make sure we don't have any gas leaks anywhere. And we'll also be checking everything with a manometer to verify proper operation. Our next step is going to be remove this chip here. Just carefully lift up and it'll come right out. And you take your LP chip and you carefully reinstall it. There you go. And we're all set there. Okay, so now we have our complete conversion kit installed. We installed our plate for our LP and our chip. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the cover back on the water heater and we'll go ahead and put those tags on there to signify that this is now ready for LP. here on the side of the heater. Just like that. A little bit crooked, but we'll live with it. All right, and as I mentioned, once we install this unit, the cover will come back off. We can put our additional tags in there. We'll double check for any gas leaks, and then we'll put it into service. And once it's into service, we'll go ahead and go over the sequence of operations and setting up the unit, programming it, as well as going over the trouble codes that this unit has. Should you get any trouble codes, you can easily diagnose any issues. So look forward to that in our next video.